How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, we're in a battle versus Zack, also known as Cheezus, from the Discord server in the underused tier. Let me know who you think is going to win based on the teams you see on screen right now. And with that being said, let's get straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Zack. Cheezus. They're going to lead off with Cleavor as we lead off with our Chestnut. I kind of figured they would lead with Cleavor, which is why I went with the Chestnut lead. Uh, Chestnut does well pretty much against their entire team, except from the Skeledurge as well. So, uh, what I'm going to do right off the bat is I'm going to Spiky Shield because that is going to stop the Stone Axe and also get a bit of chip damage on off them as well. So, we go for the Spiky Shield like so. That's going to stop the Stone Axe, stop the Stealth Rocks, and also get some chip damage breaking a potential Sash. They actually go for a counter, which is interesting. So, they fully expected us to attack there, which is very interesting. So, I'm going to go for a... Um, I'm going to go for a knockoff here. Because I feel like they go for a Stone Axe now. They do go for the Stone Axe now, which is going to do no damage. Um, so that's a pretty good play by them with the counter. Because if they expect the Spiky Shield, then that's fair enough. Um, stops them from getting that extra chip. And it means we can't go for the Spiky Shield the next turn. So we knock off their potential item. They have an Assault Vest on the Cleavor, which is interesting. So that's good to know. Uh, now I'm leaning towards Drain Punch or Leech Seed. I think I'll go for a Leech Seed because they probably U-turn. They actually go for an x Scizor, which is going to do a lot of damage. And we hit them with the Rocky Helmet. And we missed the Leech Seed. We missed the Leech Seed, which is really unfortunate. So, with that in mind, let's go for a Spiky Shield once again. This time, hopefully they attack us and we can get some Spiky Shield Chip, which would be really nice. Um, as they go for an x Scizor again, trying to get as much damage on their Chestnut as possible, which makes sense. Um, but that's going to get some chip on them, which is great. So next turn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a Drain Punch just to get some health back. If they go for a counter this turn, then we're kind of screwed. The Exes that comes through, though, nearly gets the KO. We get the Rocky Helmet chip, and then the Battle of Cleavor versus Chestnut is over. <sighs> Chestnut came out on top, which is great, with a little bit of HP left. So that's a tough Cleavor. That's a real tough Cleavor right there. In comes whatever that is, which is going to be the Ambipom. So Ambipom comes in. We have to be scared of this thing. It could go for a fake out here. It could go for a U-turn. I am leaning towards the Fretra switch. So we can go for a um, Rapid Spin. I'm also leaning towards the Gramble switch. So that we can just go for an Earthquake. And potentially catch that Skeledurge on the switch in. Potentially. I think I am going to go with a Gramble switch. Because we get the Intimidate off on the Ambipom. Which is always going to be useful. And then we can also go for an EQ. Expecting the Skeledurge to come in. So... That's going to be pretty useful for us. So we do get damaged by the stones, which is unfortunate. But we do get the Intimidate off on the Ambipom, which is great. They go for a double hit, which is actually going to do pretty much a lot of damage, to be fair. Takes us down to half after self-rock damage, um, which is pretty good. So that's that's not too bad. Uh, what we can go for here is we can go for the EQ or we can go for a Play Rough. Um, if they do go Skeledurge, I'm not too bothered because we can just go Gudra. So I might just go straight for the Play Rough play. As they go for another double hit, thinking it's going to KO. But I think Gramble lives with a sliver of HP here. We don't. It was a high roll, low roll. It, 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 it baited me. It baited me. I feel baited. That's really annoying. That is so unfortunate right there. So, got a couple of options. We could go into Crawdaunt. Or we can go Typhlosion. Leaning towards the Typhlosion. I'm leaning towards the uh, Fretress, to be honest with you. Leaning towards the Fretress, get rid of those Stealth Rocks. I think I will go Fretress, get rid of the Stealth Rocks. And here's the thing, right? They're going to go for a U-turn to switch out, which means red card's going to pop, which means they can't switch in Skeledurge, they'll get switched into a random Pokemon, which could still be Skeledurge, but I doubt it. So I'm going to go for a Rapid Spin real quick. So they go for a U-turn, which is going to pop our red card, which is great, as uh, there we go. So they don't actually get to choose what they switch into now, which is really good for us, as they're going to get dragged out into what exactly? That's the real question. They get dragged out into the Blastoise, which is great, which means we get to get a Rapid Spin off, no problemo. As there we go, Rapid Spin comes through. So Blastoise gets Rapid Spin done. And now I'm leaning towards going for a Volt Switch or a Stealth Rocks. I kind of want to go for the Stealth Rocks. But this Blastoise might be Shell Smash. But at the same time, we've got a Gudra with Assault Vest in the back. So I'm not really too worried. So I'm going to go for a Stealth Rock. They do go for the Shell Smash, which is fine. And um, we can handle this no problem. What we'll do is the next turn, we'll go for a Volt Switch, and that should do some decent damage, and then we'll Volt Switch out into the Gudra. And we have to hope they're not physical Blastoise. Because if they're physical Blastoise, we're screwed. We are screwed. So we get the Stealth Rocks up. They get the White Herb, which is going to obviously return their defensive stats to normal. We go for a Stealth Rocks, like so. And then I think they might be tempted to go for another Shell Smash here. So I'm going to go for that Volt Switch real quick. Because I, I don't think... I, I don't think they... I think they go for another Shell Smash. I think they get greedy. 
So they go for the pump, which looks really cool coming from Blastoise, by the way. And that's going to cleanly take out Fredris with a critical hit. The crit did not matter, by the way, because I'm fully physically defensive. And that's a plus two Blastoise's, you know, Hydro Pump. So and um, we're in a very bad position right now. Or are we? We could go Typhlosion. Um, we've got rid of the Rapid Spin, so we could go into Crawdon. Or we could just go straight to Gudra. I'm leaning towards G Gudra. I'm leaning towards Gudra, and here's why. So Gudra can just drop a Draco on this Blastoise real quick, right? Yeah, we just drop a Draco. There's no reason not to drop a Draco. Ice Beam, we're going to be able to eat up an Ice Beam, no problem. As there it comes. It's going to do no, no damage at plus two. As we drop that Draco, which is definitely going to do a lot of damage to the Blastoise. Doesn't quite get the KO. But it does enough to the point where we're like, you know, another Draco will do the job type thing. So they go for another Ice Beam. Blastoise is unfortunately for them not going to sweep my entire team. Unless they get a Freeze here, but they don't. And we go for the Draco Meteor, taking out the Blastoise, which is absolutely fantastic. So with Blastoise out of the way, we got some decent leeway here. So Gudra did good. Chestnut did good. My two physically and then special defensive walls have done good. Fredris did really good. He got rid of the Rapid Spin, red carded so that they couldn't go into Skeledurge, all that stuff. So they go into Bonky, which is going to be the Hitmonlee. Get some stone damage, which is nice. Uh, now I'm going to have to switch out. So I am Gooey. If they're a normal gem fake out set, they're going to get the Gooey, which will lower their speed, right? So we should switch out. I think we go Chestnut. I think we go Chestnut because if they are fake out, then I'd rather just get the Rocky Helmet chip, you know? Get the Rocky Helmet chip and then um, go from there. So we're going to you. They go for an Endure. So they're an Endure set, probably with like Le Lychee Berry or something like that. So um, I'll go for a... If they're going to go for an Endure, I'll go for a Drain Punch and, ex uh, you know, exploit this a bit. I'll get some health back on my Chestnut. I think Chestnut could really put some work in here against the Ambipom. So they go for a Reversal, which ain't going to do much damage to us now. Not enough to KO us. Rocky Helmet's going to hurt them. And then we're going to get some Drain Punch damage, which KOs the Hitmonlee straight up. And we get all that health back. Chestnut well, I didn't even recover barely any health. Hitmonlee has not got much health, you know. It's not got much health at all. So Hitmonlee is out of the way. Um, but we can at least take a double hit from a Ambipom, I'm pretty sure. Um, but they probably go into Skeledurge here, to be honest with you. In comes whatever that is, which is, I'm assuming, the Ambipom. It is the Ambipom coming in. It's going to get some Stealth Rock Chip. Let's see if Chestnut can do this. Let's go for a Drain Punch and find out if we can take a double hit or not. I think we can. I really believe in Chestnut here. So they go for a double hit. Is it going to KO us? It does KO us, but we do get the two bounds of Rocky Helmet Chip. So I think Chestnut's done really well this game. It's took out the Hitmonlee, took out the Cleavor, and um, he's done a lot of damage to the Ambipom with the Rocky Helmet Chip, which is always nice. So that's great. Now we just need to go in something faster. And I'm leaning towards... the. I'm going to have to go Typhlosion, I think. So I'm going to go Typhlosion real quick. And I think they just let the Ambipom go down at this point. Probably because we could go for a Shadow Ball, predicting them to go for the um, Skeledurge. And they also might not realize we're Choice Scarf. So I'm going to go for that Eruption real quick. I really think they'll stay in. Eruption comes through. Typhlosion comes through. They do let the Ambipom go down, which is unfortunate for them. But at the same time, it gives them a free switch into the Skeledurge now because they know we're Choice Scarfed and they know they can safely switch the Skeledurge in. However, I'm looking at this as a good opportunity to go into my Gudra. So in comes Skeledurge, the Paldea champion. Let's see what uh, Skeledurge wants to do. He's going to get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is nice. Uh, really nice. So I'm going to go into Gudra and sack it off real quick. And then we'll go Crawdon and go for that Liquidation. So we withdraw our Cobra for real. <laughs> and we're going to go into Gudra real quick. Gloopy over there, who is going to be able to do, not take any hit from this thing at all. We're going, to, you know, we're going to go down to a Shadow Ball from this thing. But at the same time, it gives us a free switch into Crawdon. Which is super useful. Now, if we assume they're going to go for a Terra here. They may go for a Terra. I don't know. We're going to do Dench Claw anyway. Dench Craw, sorry. Dench Craw. Um, I'm going to go for the Liquidation. And the reason I'm going for a Liquidation is quite simply because... Hmm, they might go into a Raquinid here. Let's go for a knockoff in case they go into a Raquinid. I feel like that's what they do. If they stay in and burn us, then that is ballsy because the burn might miss. <laughs> So they go for a Shadow Ball. They actually stay in an attack. I would have gone for a Will-O-Wisp if they had it. But they break a potential Focus Sash. We go for the knockoff, however. And that's going to definitely KO the Skeledurge, which is fantastic. So with Skeledurge out of the way, all they've got left is the Araquanid, which is fantastic for us. But at the same time, not so great because it outspeeds us, I think, and can go for a Leech Life to KO us. And then we've just got um, a Typhlosion left. So they may actually win this with Araquanid. 
In comes the Araquanid, which is great. Um, what we can do here is only three minutes left until the battle. That's, that's crazy. So what we can do is we can go for the Terra Water to be neutral to the... Um, I think it will do that to be neutral to the Le Leech Life that they could go for here. So I think that's the best thing for us to go for. So they're going to Terrastal... Oh, I'm going to Terrastalize into a Water type. Um, so that we can be neutral to that leech life that could be coming our way. Um, just because, why not? <laughs> uh, I'd like Crawdont to finish this game off if I can do. That'd be amazing. So let's go for that knockoff. Let's see what they do. They do, in fact, go for an Aqua Ring. Aqua Ring? Really? Uh, I mean, fair enough. They, we go for a knockoff, though. That's going to cleanly nearly KO the Araquanid. Knocking off their Choice Band with Aqua Ring. Okay, so the battle was really good. And then all of a sudden, they pulled that out. So I'm like, I'm really confused right now. So I'm going to go for a knockoff again. So they go for a leech life, which isn't going to do nearly enough damage now that they're not choice banded, especially. But knockoff should be able to finish them off from here as it is a pretty strong adaptability boosted move. And there we go. So that is going to be the game. So GG cheeses. That was, um, <laughs> that was a very interesting game. It was a bit bizarre at the end there. Um, he just said, did my plays become weird near the end? Yes, they did become a little weird, but it's fine. It's no problem. On to the next game. And the second battle is here. We're going against Blitzer again. The rematch. This time he's got a slightly different team. And we've got a slightly different team. Well, we've got a very different team. Um, but anyway, let me know who you think is going to win in the comment section down below. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Blitzer. So they're going to lead off with Staraptor. As we lead off with Hisui Typhlosion. Which is unfortunately a bad one. Because they could be Choice Scarfed. And we know for a fact they are Choice Scarfed because of Frisk. Which is good to know. So let's switch out because we don't want to get hit by a Brave Bird from this thing if the Choice Scarfed. I'm going to go into Gramble, get that Intimidate off. And um, because they more than likely go for a Brave Bird since they outspeed us. And it's reckless and it's really powerful from a Staraptor. So we withdraw our Typhlosion real quick, which is great. And we're going to go into Gramble who can get the Intimidate off like I say. Now they may go for a U-turn here, but I think Gramble's going to do just fine. We get the Intimidate off, which is amazing. They go for a U-turn though, expecting the switch. Really good play by my opponent. And what are they going to go into to take on Gramble? Because Gramble does really well against their team, to be honest with you. In comes Meloetta. That's a good switch, is what I would say. And it's floating as well, which is interesting. I didn't think it floated. Um, it must be one of the ones that kind of floats sometimes. So let's go for a play rough, because we are, in fact, choice banded. So we can definitely do a lot of damage. They go for a psychic, which won't KO us, I don't think. It doesn't KO us. We go for that play rough, and we miss. Really? We missed. That is so unfortunate. So if we assume they're going to go for a Hyper Voice, expecting the Crawlant to come in, and also because it'll still KO the Gramble anyway, we should switch out. And I'm, I'm wondering what to go into. I, we may have to let Gramble go down, to be honest with you. Gramble, unfortunately, missed there, which is going to cost us the Gramble. So let's go for the Play Rough real quick. They do go for a Hyper Voice, expecting the Crawlant to come in, which is why I couldn't switch Crawlant in hard. But what we can do is we can go into Crawlant now. Well, I nearly went to Fortress. We can go crawl on now and we can go straight for a knockoff. Knockoff will do a lot of damage to their entire team. Even the Brelium won't appreciate it too much. Even the Hit on Top won't appreciate it too much. So let's go for the knockoff real quick, like so. They do go for a Thunderbolt. And that's going to take us down to our Sash. And hopefully, it won't paralyze us and make us fully paralyzed. That'd be really awkward. But we hang on with our Focus Sash and we're able to go for a knockoff now, which should KO the Meloetta. It is, after all, adaptability boosted from a high attack stat. A very high attack stat. So Meloetta does go down, which is fantastic. It doesn't get to do nearly as much as it did in the last game versus Blitzer, which is great. So in comes Breloom. Breloom makes a lot of sense. It can go for a Mach Punch here, which will definitely take us out, unfortunately. Um, I could still use the Aqua Jet later, so I think I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go into Chestnut, because Chestnut pretty much walls Breloom. Um, so we'll do that real quick. There we go. They haven't got Stealth Rocks on the team, so that's going to be great. So we'll go into Juggernaug real quick, like so. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. They go for the Mock Punch, which isn't going to do much damage to Chestnut, but it does get some Rocky Helmet chip on them, which is great. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for a knockoff because I'm fully expecting them to go into Frostlass here. So they withdraw the Breloom. Are they going to go into the Frostlass, though? That's the real question. They do, in fact, go into the Frostlass. So that's great. We made the right prediction. We, get, we see the Frostlass come in. We go for a knockoff, which is going to sting quite a bit. Nearly gets the KO on the Frostlass, which is amazing. Breaking their Focus Sash. They don't get the Cursed Body as well, which is great. So what are they going to go for here? I think I'm going to have to go into Gudra, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Um, Gudra's Draco Meteor hurts their entire team pretty badly. So we'll go into good old Gloopy over here, like so. And they go for an Ice Beam, which is going to bounce right off us. Nicely done, Gudra. 
And then we'll go for a Fire Blast. And the reason I'm going for a Fire Blast is because I don't want to drop a Draco just yet. I think dropping a Draco right now is a bit premature because they could switch out into the likes of the Hitmontop, which I would rather drop a Draco on. So they go for a Destiny Bond. I never see this coming. Every time someone goes for Destiny Bond on me, I never see it coming as we do hit the Fire Blast. I wish I would have missed there. Frostlast does take down the Gudra with the Destiny Bond and Gudra goes down. But luckily, everything on the team except for the Altaria is a physical attacker. Like, Hitmontop could have Ice Spinner. Star to hurts us with Brave Bird really badly. Even Breloom can Swords Dance and go for a Mock Punch really easily. So I think that we're not too bad with the Gudra going down there. So what I'm going to go into here is I'm going to go into the... Hmm, I want to go into something. I don't know what, though. I think we go into Ferretrus. So they're going to go into Ulreen, which is going to be the Altaria. Nice and shiny as well. Got to love it. We go into Alcatraz real quick, who is going to appreciate this. Um, so they're going to go for a Fire Blast more than likely. Uh, we don't really have a switch in, so we're going to have to hope that they don't. Uh, so I'm going to go for a Stealth Rocks. I'm going to go straight for a Stealth Rocks, um, because if they hit us with a Will-O-Wisp, Will-O-Wisp is a strong... I forgot Alteri got Will-O-Wisp, to be honest with you. That's interesting. So we go for the Stealth Rocks, we get it up. They don't get to burn us, which is nice. And then what we can do is we can just go straight for a knock, a, a Vol Switch, and get on out of there, pretty much. So they go for a Cotton Guard, which is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. So Vol Switch comes through. That's going to do no damage to the Altaria, obviously. But we don't have to worry too much about this. So what we can do is, if we go into something that they have to basically KO, um, I think I'm going to go into Chestnut. Because Chestnut, if uh, does Altaria get body press with Cotton Guard? Does it get body press? Because every Pokemon gets body press apparently now. They are leftovers, which is interesting. So what do we do here? I, I think we go for a Leech Seed for a start. I think that is the way to go forward. So they go for a Will-O-Wisp, which is obviously going to burn us, but it's not the end of the world with Chestnut being burned. Definitely not the end of the world. This Altaria could prove to be problematic right now, especially if we miss the Leech Seed, which we don't, luckily. So Leech Seed comes through. Which is going to sap their health every turn. Then we'll knock off their leftovers so they're getting less recovery every turn. And then they're going to have Cotton Guard, Will-O-Wisp. Probably Roost. So Roost is going to be a tough one to deal with. And then what? I don't know. But we're going to get some health back anyway. Which is always nice. And then we're going to go for a knockoff. We'll get rid of that leftovers. Because that leftovers is a pain in the bum. So we'll go for the knockoff real quick like so. So they're going to withdraw the Altaria. They clearly don't have anything to hit my Chestnut with. And they're going to go into Iwow, which is going to be the Hitmontop, right? Yeah, the Hitmontop comes in. I remember that from last time we battled. They used the Hitmontop then. So we go for a knockoff, which is going to do no damage, obviously, to the Hitmontop. But we do get rid of their Heavy Duty Boots, which is great. Now they probably go for a Rapid Spin. So I'm going to go for a Spiky Shield. That is for sure. So we're going to go for a Spiky Shield like so. Spiky Shield comes through, blocking that Rapid Spin, but also getting some chip damage off on them as well, which is great. As they do, in fact, go for a bulldoze. A bulldoze? Why a bulldoze? Is that going to lower my speed? Oh, they, I bet they expected... Ah! They expected Typhlosion to come in to block the rapid spin. That's what they expected. No, sir. No, siree. That is not what happens here. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go into my Fretress. No. Yeah? No? So now that I've seen the bulldoze, they're not going to expect me to switch my Typhlosion in. They are not going to expect it at all. They're probably expecting us to keep our chestnut in to leech seed or something like that. Um, but they do go for the rapid spin this turn, which we successfully block, which is amazing. So that's worked out really nicely for us. We can safely go for an eruption now, and that's going to do a lot of damage to pretty much anything on their team. Even the Altaria wouldn't want to take that. So we go for the eruption. They do stay in. That's going to cleanly take out the Hitmon top, which is amazing. They are not a defensive Hitmon top. As down it goes to the eruption, which is fantastic. So let's see how this pro. Let's see how this uh, changes the flow of the battle, shall we? So in comes the Staraptor. Staraptor can easily go for a Brave Bird on us, which is unfortunate. We do get some Stealth Rock Chip on them, which is great. But they are faster than my Typhlosion. So what I'm going to have to do here is I'm, I'm going to have to... I, I want to go into Chestnut and sack it off. I really do. But at the same time, I don't, you know? Now, I'm going to go into Chestnut and sack it off, because they, they they either go for a U-turn here, expecting the switch into Fortress, or they go straight for the Brave Bird. I think they go straight for the Brave Bird. The Recoil plus the Rocky Helmet is going to easily take out that Staraptor. So they go for the Brave Bird, which is obviously going to take out Chestnut over here, which is unfortunate, but it's whatever. They get hurt by the Rocky Helmet, and they get hurt by the Recoil from the Brave Bird. 
And it's not enough to take him out, but it's enough to do a lot of damage. You know? To the point where I'm pretty confident that um, Crawdon can go for an Aqua Jet and take this thing out. So I'm going to go into Crawdon, Dench Craw. Pretty confident Aqua Jet will take it out here, so I'm going to go for it. So we go for an Aqua Jet. It should take out the Star Raptor as it does take out the Star Raptor, which is amazing. Star Raptor goes down. Dench Craw on 1 HP is doing wonders right now. It took out the Meloetta and then it takes out the Star Raptor as well. Pretty awesome stuff, I will say. So in comes the Breloom. Breloom is in a very good position. It can Mac Punch us all it wants to. It gets some Stealth Rock Chip, which is unfortunate. Um, but we're able to switch out now and go into Fortress if we want to. Or we can go into the Typhlosion. Now I'm leaning towards the Typhlosion big time. I am leaning towards the Typhlosion, but they may predict that. So what I'm tempted to do is, because we don't really need Crawdot anymore, I'm going to go for an Aqua Jet. Just because I feel like, yeah, they go, they're going to predict the Typhlosion and go for a Rock Tomb or something like that. Swords Dance, even worse. Even worse. So Swords Dance comes through. But it doesn't matter how high they get their attack, because as long as we outspeed them with Typhlosion, which we do, it doesn't matter. So we'll go for an Aqua Jet once again. This time they might expect us to switch out, but they don't. They go for a Mock Punch, which means Crawdon does go down. But I didn't need Crawdon for anything else, because A, that um, Altaria's got Cotton Guard. And Breloom doesn't really care about knockoff or liquidation. So um, we go Typhlosion now. We hard go Typhlosion into Cobra for real. Cobra for real. We get the Frisk off. We know the loaded dice now, which is good to know. We go for an Eruption because they can't mock punch us. Eruption comes through. They don't switch into Altaria, which is nice. And down goes the Breloom. So this is looking like a pretty close game. Because what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to go into our Fretress and we're going to have to Volt Switch on the Altaria back into Typhlosion and hope Shadow Ball can take it out, pretty much. So we get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is nice. Now we go into our Fretress and there's no reason for them to go to Cotton Cotton Guard, right? Because if they go Cotton Guard, all that's going to happen is they're going to get hit by special attacks anyway. So there's no point going for Cotton Guard. So they're probably going to attack. Let's see what Altaria can do. Let's see what this Altaria can do, okay? So we'll go into Alcatraz. They do go for a Moonblast, so they are Moonblast, interestingly enough. Red card's going to pop, not that it does anything. In fact, it won't even pop because it doesn't do anything. But they're going to get leftovers because we didn't get managed to knock it off earlier. Um, now we go into we go for the Volt Switch. We 100% go for a Volt Switch right now. They probably go for a, if I had to guess, a Roost. Heat Wave! That's going to take out my Fretress. So Fretress does go down. So they have Heat Wave, Cotton Guard, Will-O-Wisp, and Moonblast. I think it's safe to, say, safe to say Typhlosion may have won this one for us. Unless they continuously get special attack drops on the Moonblast. But they don't have Roost, which is really good for us. So we're going to Cobra for real. Like so. FR. Can I get an FR in the chat? Thank you. Let's go for a Shadow Ball. Just because why not? So we go for the Shadow Ball. It's going to do a decent chunk of damage to the Altaria. No, not going to lie. Not too much, though. And we do get a special defense drop, which is really nice. They go for a Moonblast. That's going to obviously do no damage. But it might get a special attack drop, which it doesn't. So now we know the Shadow Ball should take them out this next turn. As Hisuian Typhlosion is going to come through for us once again. And, uh, well, once again. It's going to come through for us. They do Terrastalize. What type are they going to Terrastalize into, though? That's the real question. Is it going to be Fairy or something like that? Fairy. Okay, so the Terra Fairy, they want to get that extra power on the Moonblast if they can live a Shadow Ball. But I don't think they do live the Shadow Ball. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Shadow Ball comes through. And down goes the Altaria. And that's going to be the game. So GG Blitz. So that was a pretty fun one and a great second battle for the video. Brilliant game. I, I really enjoyed that one. GG Blitzer. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.